Hello there, my name is Ismos and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial and uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, how you can rig a car using the Blender Rigid Body System. So this is going to be a little bit more advanced uh, than uh, uh, some of the tutorials I've been making. So if you are not familiar with the Rigid Body System, how the Rigid Body System works in Blender, I've created a free course on my second channel, Blender Money, so you can go over there and uh, watch that uh, so that you can get at least the basics out of uh, out of the way uh, since I'm not going to go to go on and explain every step I'm making here because I'm trying to just go through the really fast since we have a lot to cover here I've also downloaded this model uh, from a site called a uh, free 3d models free 3d.com uh, so you can uh, just go there and search for SC Cobra and you download the model for free uh, this was made by Alex 38 so you can thank him for for the model uh, because it's a really nice model so yeah let's get started with this i've made a few slight changes to the model i've joined uh, some most of the elements uh, that are separated as individual objects uh, so that i can work with one single mesh as the base mesh and then I just reset my origin to the center there and uh, separate it i think the tires are separate uh, but uh, any doors tires any objects that i want to have as separate objects I've separated them uh, so if in case I want these to uh, just break off I have that separated I uh, maybe we'll also separate this boat and uh, this uh, front yeah uh, bonnet uh, as well so <coughs> but uh, so let's get into the re rigging of this so let's go back to material view Yes, yeah, so if I play back, you can see nothing happens. Uh, let me reduce my timeline to about 100 uh, for now. You can see nothing really happens. Uh, let's set up uh, the rigid body system. Uh, so we can go to the physics panel and uh, give the road a type of a rigid body of type passive. Again, I explained this, most of the steps I'm making here already in my course here. So you can just go watch that if you don't understand what I'm doing here. Uh, so then for this car model, I don't want to use this entire car as the collision shape uh, because it has a lot of details uh, that uh, uh, that uh, that can take out uh, take away some of the computation power we need uh, to process this. It will just in, if we use this as uh, the actual model for uh, the rigid body simulation, uh, we we are going to use a lot of computation power for this. So I found a nice trick to create a collision shape uh, that is in the shape of the car. Uh, so retaining the shape we want but um, without having those polygons added to the uh, base calculation. So I found a nice trick on how to create a very easy uh, collision shape uh, from a tutorial, a tutorial about uh, the same kind of tutorial uh, making a car collision uh, from uh, I think it's called Albin Mire. I'm sorry for the pronunciation, but uh, it has a lot of cool stuff here. So uh, this story here, Blender Card Dynamic uh, Crash, is a very a good example of what we are doing, doing here. But uh, I think he doesn't go too much in details, uh, especially in some areas. So uh, that's what I'm trying to cover here. Uh, so you can go watch uh, that tutorial there and see some, pick up some of the techniques he used there. Uh, yeah, so here I'm just going to give a, a little bit more detailed explanation of what he did and uh, maybe also add, add on my own tips so yeah so let's create the collision shape and you can just add a cube scale it uh, so that it fits it covers encloses the entire car uh, something like that like this then you can subdivide uh, this a few times uh, make sure you have at least squares like that and then go to the modifiers and add a shrink wrap modifier and uh, then select uh, the base car as uh, you, you target you can offset this a bit uh, so that we enclose most of the car I don't necessarily have to capture the tires uh, I think he did it in his own version but I, th I think uh, there's a different I'm going to do it a bit differently uh, because I in my experiments I found it more efficient to have the the tears separate from the base mesh so then you can apply the shrink shrink wrap modifier so we have our collision shape now we can go on and add 
our rigid body system to this now if we play back it just falls down but uh, we want this to be uh, we want the entire car to be parented to uh, this body uh, so that it falls uh, with that body uh, what I'm going to do is uh, so that I can easily see uh, the, the the actual car I'm just going to go to uh, the uh, object properties and turn off uh, change the display from texture to wire uh, so that I can see through uh, this uh, collision shape now I'm also going to select everything else from the car and parent it to using control P parent it to my mesh so if I play back we get that now let me increase <coughs> Uh, the weight of the card just a bit maybe to a hundred so that it bounces a little bit better now you can see that uh, the tires are clipping uh, because the collision shape doesn't cover uh, our tires so what we can do is create a separate collision shape in the same in the shape of other tires so we can just add a cylinder rotate it again I'm just going to give it change the display type to wire scale this down something like that so that it covers the entire car the entire tire like that play back nothing happens but uh, you can give it uh, the same rigid body system but uh, because it's intersecting with this other collision shape it's being pushed out eject being ejected from uh, because that's kind of uh, an error uh, since our collision rigid bodies should in intersect as and uh, this is intersecting uh, this collision shape is intersecting with this that's why it's being ejected out uh, we can avoid the collision by giving this tire a different collection layer so uh, if I put it here then we avoid that but uh, now it's going through uh, this ground uh, because it's not on the same collision layer so I want this to be able to collide with this ground so I'll select I'll give this road uh, also a second layer so that it can uh, th so that this tire can uh, collide with this now instead of this tire being parented to uh, this shape it can be parented to this here so control p keep now you can see it does this tire does no longer goes through our ground uh, the, uh, the rest of the tires we can work on them later after we do a few things so now if i give this a slight angle you will notice that uh, uh, these tires are not connected uh, to the rest of the tires let me first apply the scale of these uh, so that it can roll down sometimes you need to apply the scale of the objects uh, for the physics to work correctly uh, yeah so I uh, can see that this tire is not really attached to this chassis or the body of the car uh, so to attack that we're going to add rigid body constraints again if you don't if you're not sure what I'm talking about here you can just go to my uh, second channel uh, blender money and watch uh, some of the videos there where I talk about uh, the rigid body constraints so we're going to add a rigid body constraint so shift a add an empty with an arrow yeah, let me just scale it up, up here and uh, give it a rigid body constraint uh, the type is going to be a hinge as uh, since we want to connect this well uh, so that is rotating on its axis like this so to make that work uh, we need to select uh, this uh, constraint connect the chassis or the body and then the tire now if you play back you can see they are now connected but uh, the axis of rotation or the hinge uh, axis uh, our hinge is facing the wrong direction so we want to rotate it at face this direction so that uh, the tire can pivot around uh, that hinge as you can see there now we can copy over these settings uh, we can copy this tire uh, to the other to the to the same position where we had the other one so shift D make sure you, you're copying uh, the collision shape uh, this constraint and the tire itself so that you have everything working like that now we just need to shift D rotate it by 180 so that is facing the other direction 
then duplicate this shift D uh, you can also change to the front view and uh, just to make sure that you're aligning these correctly doesn't have to be perfect but, uh, perfect would be better so now you can see the car even rolls back so now if you want to have this move forward if you want this to move forward uh, we can give this some bit of acceleration or have a way to control uh, the acceleration of the car the forward acceleration or even the backward ac acceleration uh, the reverse, reverse acceleration we can use another constraint uh, the motor constraint usually what I usually do what I've been doing usually uh, I would just add uh, some keyframes and just animate uh, the animated property but uh, that usually creates a few problems when especially if you have other constraints attached to the car so instead of that we're just going to use the motor constraint uh, to have to give the car some acceleration so for this just add a cube like that and give it a rigid body system the flavor just falls then uh, it can actually be a type of passive then uh, give it a rigid body constraint i make sure the type is set to motor then select uh, the car the car collision shape and then uh, the the cube now if we play back nothing really happens but uh, if we change the linear velocity if we turn linear velocity and uh, give this a target velocity so we want the car to accelerate to a velocity of let's say 1000 meters per second and uh, this maximum impulse is like the acceleration how much power do you want uh, the car to have so let's say 100 and see that's quite high uh, that's why you see it's kind of pushing the car far like that let's say something like 50 so the direction are uh, the direction of let me just get let me turn this to local so that we can see where these are pointing this is pointing so the x direction of this cube determines where this is going to face where this velocity uh, where this motion is going to go so if i rotate this by 180 so that this is going forward you can see we are getting that forward movement but uh, the problem is it's also flipping the car because as this is falling to gravity we are also getting that forward push which pushes which pivots the car down and uh, we get that so what we can do is uh, move this closer to the car and uh, maybe even parent this uh, to the car control P you can see now we get that so again uh, because this is still in the air in the air it has that forward movement and then the gravity is also pulling the pulling on the car uh, giving this a forward spin so what we can do is a first turn of this acceleration so let me just have the acceleration set to zero and just keyframe that meaning that the car will just go down maybe we can also just give it a let it uh, roll down a bit then give it an impact of, uh, just just give it some acceleration and let's see what happens it rolls then you can see just increase now my keyframes yeah, it goes up it goes forward now if you want this maybe to say you're trying to create a stunt you can add a ramp here uh, so that this can slide off let me change my orientation back to global okay this is supposed to be a rigid body as well so give it a type of passive and i think my ramp uh, is lacking a bit so let me just make it maybe 
let's increase the acceleration to maybe 50. That means that uh, the car gets more acceleration power. So uh, the car I think is a bit light. So let's just increase its mass just a bit. Okay, that's what well, that was too much. So let's try. 600 yeah so that's how you can do that uh, I guess in the next part we can uh, have this car this wind uh, these doors also swing around and maybe the bonnet and the boot can also be given uh, some we go sorry some hinges after that they can yeah react to physics so thank you for watching i'll see you in the next